India's biggest food leaders, best food philosophies, genius culinary minds converge right here. I'm Govind Raj Ethirajan. Joining us today is celebrity chef Ajay Chopra. Welcome to Secret Sauce. So Ajay, let me start with uh, asking you a fairly uh, sort of commonplace question. What did you have for dinner last night? <laughs> this wasn't the first question I was expecting in this chat, but yeah. Um, to be honest, I didn't have dinner last night because we were actually trialing for a restaurant. Okay. And uh, when you trial for a restaurant, you pick on uh, a spoonful of at least 40 dishes, mm. which becomes your dinner. So, so you, you obviously have a process and, and the way you go about it yeah. when you let's say set up a new kitchen or even in an existing kitchen, how yeah. you maybe approach a new cuisine or a restaurant. So how, when did you develop this? Uh, wherever I have gone, um, been involved in opening of new restaurants, I've been involved in setting up of new restaurants. Uh, obviously, it's a part of a larger house, which is a hotel. Um, and it helps you because you have uh, many other parties helping you. So there's always a purchase manager to help you. There's always a materials manager or, or a maintenance manager or uh, a, a, a plethora of chefs who are working under you. Um, and when you just say, go and it talk, you know, it happens. Um, so all of that during this journey of, of me learning, uh, has come to a, a stage where I can then sit down and methodically say that okay, if I have to do this by my own self, this is how it would be. Um, so obviously you don't have the luxury of having 20 people working for you at that time because you're working for your own self. Um, uh, but now it has come to a stage that yes, I'm doing 6-8 restaurants and, and I will have to do it all by myself. So how much of your role currently, and I'm going to take you to the past in a moment, how much of your role currently would you say is to do with the actual process of cooking or designing cuisine versus all the other aspects that you just mentioned? So I would say that uh, uh, whatever was there still stays and more is added. So the, the planning of the menu is still mine, the execution of the menu is still mine. Uh, what I would probably not do is uh, go into the detail of training every single day. So I've, I've hired some chefs who, so the first batch of training would be done by me. And then post that, you know, the handover will happen where the guys are just continuously making those dishes again and again and again. And then I will actually go on to the other side and start sampling them and not cooking with them because then I want to see as a customer as to how is it coming, what time is it taking and all of that. So I need to do both ways now. Uh, so really speaking, that, that job of cooking and planning and executing menu still stays. Uh, plus the job of becoming a restaurant head has become. Plus uh, the job of planning the whole restaurant, the mechanics, the cockery cutlery, glassware, the, the tables, the chairs, the looks, the persona, everything has also added. So I think um, is growth. That's how I can probably put it. Right. So let me take you back now. So you started cooking at the age of nine. So tell us about that day when you walked into the kitchen and you started helping your mother. Um, well, actually, it wasn't a day, uh, but you know, it was more of a, a time or a season where uh, I was growing up and and. Uh, didn't have any any real uh, liking towards a kitchen kitchen really um, but I was the youngest in my family and uh, no sisters only three brothers uh, uh, so I was the youngest and I was always rather pushed inside the kitchen because uh, um, we would come back home after school and mum would always be working and we'll find food in the casserole which was obviously not hot uh, so my brothers actually started push me that chal garam karke leke. Um, you know, it was more like a... So that's nothing to being a chef, it was just making yeah. menial labor. Like, yeah. yeah, just uh. karam karke leke, you know, yeah. just because you're young, so... Mm. Um, and I realized that over a period of time, I started to enjoy it. Mm. Now, what I started to do it was that rather than keeping it monotonous and just doing it, whenever we would go out, I would actually pick on the dhaba wala doing the dal tadka mm. or pick on the Chinese man cutting the vegetables and I would just carefully watch them that, what are they doing? And I would come back home and try and replicate it. Now that's my first memory of me learning cuisine or learning food or rather saying that developing that love for food. But at that time, I mean, just to go back to when you were, let's say, 9 or 10 years old, yeah. people already knew that in your family that you had an inclination or a proclivity which was much more than most people would. Not really. I would not do this outside the house. I would not do this uh, very regularly. But um, purely in the household and uh, my mum, uh, when I said that I started to cook with her, was the first time I actually made a cup of tea for her and she, she was not well. And uh, she loves chai, you know, and, and anything which can really excite her is a nice, I won't say cup of chai, but in Punjabis we have the glass of chai, you know, the steel ka glass. And um, so I made that chai for her because I had always been watching Ye Jata Hai, Wo This jata is hai. in Alwar? This was in Alwar, that's right. It was when I was about nine or ten, I can't remember exactly. And um, she was actually deeply moved 
uh, by this gesture of mine and then she would always call me when she was cooking and uh, i was closer to my mom because obviously i was younger and i was just watch her so while i would be talking about something completely different with no relation to cooking i would still happen to see what she is doing and pick on some things that, that was not seen as unusual by your brothers or other family members um because boys don't do this in this boys country boys don't do right? this yeah, yeah but again it was more taken as a help given to mum hmm. than anything else hmm. um because even i didn't realize that i'm going to pursue it as a career hmm. come my class 12th hmm. where uh, uh, you know all of this was just going on off and on very off and on it was not very very much in the face um where i didn't really had the uh, capacity to actually become a doctor or engineer where my parents wanted to be and uh, i saw this program about hospitality mm. and uh, saw how glamorous this whole thing could be uh, and the whole glamour aspect kind of you know just took me aback saying that oh i i never thought that this is how it you is you saw this on tv i saw this on tv some program about air hostessing and hotels and how how polished all of this is and i coming from a very small town mm. where i could barely speak english um and at this time you were in sonipat at this time i was in sonipat yeah, so which is quite my close journey to Delhi. my class 1 to class 7th was alwar then we moved to sonipat uh, it was a big down because i came from an english medium school into a english medium school which converted into an english medium school the same year we joined hmm. uh, so it was a hindi medium school so obviously all the teachers hmm. none of them were retrenched hmm. all of them were the same teachers teaching the same way what i realized that after my class 12th i couldn't speak a line of english hmm. so it was that bad but that's when i actually saw that you know i wanted to do something related to this so the first year one of my brother's friend mm. actually joined the panipat catering college mm. and i also went there for an interview fortunately and i say this fortunately i'll explain this why i didn't get through that college mm. and i was just kind of rejected by a mark or so thank god uh, because god has his ways in everything and i think he had his hand over me that time also because I think that college would have not taken me anywhere. Um but then I waited for another year with the NCHM, the Pusa Trust and everything. I got through IHM and my posting was in Goa. Uh So at that time I mean your your parents had completely accepted that this is the path I mean both. My mother was actually resistant till the time she saw my face on television. Okay. Um and resistant meaning that uh because you know And how did that happen the television? I'll I'll come to that. Um So I mean it's not a hidden fact that chefs hotels don't pay much mm. right and we don't make a lot of money and uh, you work horrendously long hours mm. um but you don't make that much money and my other two brothers were obviously making much more than me and were much more happier and they had a 9 to 6 job and they would have saturday sunday offs while staff would be working on all vacations and all um everything but get paid like 8 9 10 000 rupees uh and that was shameful for her always but um over a period of time uh from mumbai i went to london then my life kind of got a little better and then i came back so she kind of accepted it but really speaking she was not proud of of me mm. in the terms what i was doing she would somewhere say that you know you could have done an mba you could have done this and done a better job see you don't have a life right now see your wife you know she's waiting till 12 o'clock all that was always there till the time she saw me on television and television happened by the grace of god mm-hmm. i mean really speaking i but that's done. much later you don't you're talking about master chef yeah. Yeah. yeah that was the first stint um that was just great so what you're saying that till then there was always a sense of yeah maybe an unsurety or, son. but it, but your father was fine at all times my father was uh, kind of fine uh, because uh, maybe he believed in me a little more than my mother mm-hmm. <laughs> um but yeah i mean all of them ha- had one thing to say that you know whatever you do you do well uh, so that was always the motto in our family that whatever so, you do so tell me about this so this is the point where you know people could actually change tracks because if your both your parents are unhappy or seem unhappy yeah. or not sure about you yeah. then it's the kind of point where you may say okay now maybe i need to do something else yeah. i mean maybe medicine is difficult because i'm not yeah. getting in but maybe i need to go into a third path yeah. so how, how do you manage that particular phase so that particular phase after my class 12th i did bsc I did one year of BSc. I scored very well, right? And and I could have pursued that BSc, but the moment I got this uh thing I told my dad I said this is the only place I've got through so I really think I can do this. Trust me I can do this. And my dad really was not so well to do at that time where he could take care of all three brothers studying in three different colleges outside the house which meant a lot more 
of kharcha uh, but then he still took that step of faith and he said okay go um, i think that was that was his faith you know that and your conviction and my conviction uh, that kind of because the moment i entered the college a month later i was very sure that i want to be a chef and i still remember that day um, in our college our college used to participate for miramar food festival that was a festival which would feed about 1000 1500 people every day mm. um, the third years were obviously the ones who would take on but the first years would be the helpers the commies the the laborers right and we were to uh, we were to peel chickens uh, the day we entered and there were about 450 odd chickens to be peeled we were a batch of 120 all 120 started to peel the chicken after an hour about seven of us were left peeling the chicken i didn't even realize when everybody left i didn't even realize and, and why did they leave because they hated it okay they hated the fact that they're peeling a chicken i loved the fact i was peeling the chicken so that was the difference really because i i think everything to do with the kitchen i was enjoying it i was enjoying dirtying my hands i was enjoying uh doing that process i was enjoying the fact that i am faster than my other peers and i've peeled five and he's only peeled one and he's struggling and i'm fine you know all of that the whole sense of competition started to develop um later there i realized that every single time i would want to bunk a french lecture but never want to bunk a a food production lecture so i think the whole process was that i always loved food it was always there in my heart but kind of started to blossom hmm. um when uh, right. when i was in iceland so one of the early disadvantages you faced was language and you were telling yes. me that you couldn't speak english very well i'm assuming because of that transfer to a school where yeah. english was not the or people from the hindi medium were trying to teach english yeah. so how how did you manage that and what were the kind of maybe interesting situations that you faced well it was a whole interesting time actually uh, uh, and a time of good 10 to 12 years because uh, language doesn't come to you like that you know uh, so i started to learn the language very well and we were very good in our in our language till the time we moved to sonipat for a 7th class student my interview question was spelling of football that was it and i was in i was like wow that's a good school you know just the spelling of football and you're in later that i realized that my language actually started to deteriorate and drop and to the extent that i could not speak english i could not process one full sentence and when i went for my ihm exam i almost spoke in broken english mixed with haryanvi where are you from uh i come from pridabad that's exactly how i spoke so the whole process was the interview was more in hindi rather than english but i just enjoyed the time Uh, but i do remember that part because i took that as a learning mm. uh, because i had to improve my language mm. and, and then you taught yourself and i taught myself i by reading newspapers by walking on the streets uh, alone and just uh, recitating you know uh, uh, a chapter on cow mm. people do that at the age of 5 6 but i was doing that at the age of 18 19 you know so but i had to catch up i had to quickly catch up so tell me about your first job i mean you were at the oberoi sale and then let's talk about oberoi so let's talk about my career graph i i when i passed out college i was a gold medalist we won the all india chefs competition um and i had a gold medal there uh, i was uh, topper in my food production and uh, post that i realized that i had to have a job mm. because my life and death scenario was to get through over a school of learning and development that's ocld actually mm. um you went to tgif yeah and i didn't get through mm. and i didn't get through and that year was so bad that taj interviewed me never released the results mm. marriott interviewed me shortlisted me mm. a month later they said we've changed the shortlist and your name is not there so finally i ended up with no job mm. i went to chef manjit singh gill and we still have a laugh now um and i said chef you remember gold medal you gave me a gold medal this is a dish i made ha 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 yeah yeah chef i need a job mm. oh really come join me as an apprentice mm. i said chef i just finished an ihm you want me to join an apprentice again mm. yeah in my kitchen everybody starts as an apprentice mm. i was frustrated i was like what to do now and that's where i ended up in tj fridays seven months every single day i would tell myself i need to get out of this place <laughs> but mm. tj i have taught me so much so much i i would say every single place i have worked I, one thing I can teach be, you something. Yeah, I, I can be proud about that. I picked out something from there. Mm. You know, so I tell us about the, let's say the three things that you you held close or you hold dear that you picked up in. Today I I plan restaurants, mm. especially in Bombay. It's only because of TGIF. Mm. TGIF kitchen was very cramped. It was super small, mm. but it was super super energetically perform uh, made, agronomically designed. I had my section not bigger than this, and in this section, I would take out 350 pastas, about 250 pizzas, uh, about 250 bakes, 
you know each day and everything was at a hands distance you know this is how my hands oh, move like a cockpit it's yeah. it's like a cockpit you know and they had really thought about everything and they planned everything and standardization is the second thing i learned from djf any anybody if we talk about franchising models they have to go back to these companies and learn real time standardization they, they they go to the end of a supplier production so if they're buying paprika they are not just happy by buying paprika by one supplier they will go to the farm they will understand where is the traceability of the chili and then they will do the paprika so that standardization that's what i learned from them and now i can use it and the third thing i realized that nothing comes easy you know and and the biggest learning which came out one night i had come out super tired came back home my back was hurting and i asked my brother to rub my back and he said what happened today extremely tired i said yeah we had some huge load i made some 500 odd pastas so he's rubbing my back and saying acha ek pasta kitne ka bechte ho uh, i said about 325 and he started calculate oh so which means you earned 1.5 lakhs for somebody else today you know and that struck me that really struck me but it stayed on with me i had no option i had i could do nothing with that thought till today so when i came out of western so that's the birth of an entrepreneur that's birth yeah. of an entrepreneur yeah and and that's where i was said that if i could take a 23 crore fnb mm. to a 46 crore fnb mm. i added 23 more crores in mr vikas obra's pocket mm. what did i get great well done chef kudos nothing in my bank really and that's where i thought that okay i can do something mm. so obviously if to make 23 46 you need a 900 crore investment i don't have that but still if you can do 20 lakhs to 60 lakhs it's a growth right and and yet you must have had breaking points right maybe there are points oh, where you many. say that i want to give up this i want to give up this and i want to go back many tell many. me about one many tell, tell me about one i was the uh, chef de cuisine of lotus cafe um, in mumbai uh, jw marriott uh, that restaurant uh, when i joined would do an average sale of 1.8 to 2 lakhs a day and we saw a peak of 7.8 lakhs on a christmas day mm-hmm. and uh, i think i worked for about 28 hours uh, i i i came in and uh, about 6 in the morning and uh, we were there till the next afternoon till the next afternoon mm-hmm. and i came back after sleeping 2 hours for the evening service because again christmas eve was again busy and uh, sorry the next day after christmas was again busy um the next day i again came back and guess what my executive chef points out four problems and i look back to him and said do you even realize that from the last 3 days i'm literally living here doing everything possible that i can and you don't see any of that and you see these three mistakes i i, I took this i i hear by design He looked at me in my eye and just tore it like this. He said, "Do you think I have not gone through this? I've gone through this five, six times myself. What I'm trying to tell you is that when the gold goes through purification, it hurts. It really hurts. But unless you take the last speck out, it doesn't value that much." And he said, "I am only trying to take the last speck out." And I just thank that man. Is it thank him late subsequently or were you no, no, on that sub- day obviously not that day yeah, obviously not that you felt like killing him that day, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah his name is elton hertis he is the general manager of uh, courtyard bhopal today he was my chef and that guy is instrumental uh, in in many ways to to mold me uh, to what i am and i think just tough situations uh, always um, come but you got to be blessed uh, i was blessed by people around me who would take care of me. So you worked in London as well for three years, if I'm about, not mistaken. About three years. Three years. So what's? Did you have any sort of different learnings from what you? Many, 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 many. I think each space, each kitchen, each country teaches you a different, uh, uh, a different thing about food, about dynamics, about people. Very different. So all this while, I'll, I'll give you my learnings in three steps. One was the country by itself. So. Uh, a country which loves indian food but is uh, only used to a kind of indian food which is where they exposed to now for them authentic indian food holds no value mm. you know they think that it's it's full of oil or full of masalas so if we give them a chicken chutney art they'll probably get offended by it because there's so much spice in it and you're trying to kill me um if i take that same chutney art spice and i did that okay 
and rather than adding one teaspoon of it, I had a pinch of it on the asparagus, and I tossed the asparagus with it. I said, "Wow, what flavors!" Thought to myself, "Hey, this is the same chutney spice." We said, "Ooh, are you trying to kill me?" So, which means that the amount, the quantity, and the whole uh, the flavor profile is very, very uh, not so vibrant for them. So, for them, they want to taste the asparagus. Mm. They want to taste the spice. They don't want to have an overwhelming Bar, yeah. uh, a, a taste the profile. Like the way it, we yeah. like it. We, if you like chatpata, nia to mazani aega. So that's where I think that was the flavor part of it, or the, the guest part of it. The second part of it was the kitchens. I I was brought about, or rather brought up in in hotel kitchens, where again you are very surrounded by a very comfortable atmosphere. As you have a purchase manager, you have uh, an engineer working with you, you have chefs who report to you in hierarchy in order. In restaurants, especially abroad, you got to earn your respect all over again. Nobody respects you just because you're head chef. Nobody. You got to prove it to them. You can't again. If I don't cook for one day in a hotel, it's fine. You know, it's fine because I'm the executive chef. But as a head chef, if you don't cook for two continuous days, the third day you might be questioned by the general manager, by the guest, or by your staff. By the way, what did you cook today? I didn't today. Anything. That's another thing. You have to learn. Uh, there have been times where I've been on the pot wash myself as the head chef. At 11:45 in the night, the pot, the the cleaning guy hasn't come, and uh, my staff is saying, "Oh, bye, chef. Good night." Who's going to do this? You. You're the head chef. You're the head of the house. Take it. Because that's an important lesson again. That's an important lesson. You know that you you get your team to work for you all over again, and I had to earn that respect all over again. The third part was all about planning. You know, and and we can take things for granted because we're in India, and we things we we really get labor cheap. um a call to a plumber is 70 to 100 pounds and if it's a weekend it's 150 so you better be planned because your owner is not going to spend 150 pounds on a broken tap or on a broken fridge i had a broken fridge on thursday evening and i call up this engineer and says uh, can you come and fix it mate as said, well tomorrow i'm a little busy i can come on saturday uh Saturday means 150 pounds. No, no, no. Can you come today? Tomorrow, tomorrow, today, tomorrow. Please, please, please. And he finally understands and says, "Okay, fine." He comes and checks the fridge. He takes 100 pounds from him. Does nothing. Said the fridge broken. He's going to take four days to fix. Tomorrow is weekend. I can't do anything. And that's when I realized that, wow, you know, in my country it was so much better. Things happen like this. Here doesn't happen. So each country teaches you so many things: mechanics, understanding of the money, understanding of the food, understanding of the flavor, understanding of the people. and how you got to deal with all of that to come up and rise up to that situation because you can't perform unless you've risen up all these situations the maslow need hierarchy kind of puts you down every time and says that you are still at the base level if you're not able to rise up and say okay i still am the chef i will do it right so last question what 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 would be your secret sauce or sauces <laughs> so i think if i had to just kind of sum up with whatever we've spoken um one thing stands out is that each part of our life Uh, and the experience uh a lot of people let it go uh, they don't keep it hold fast to it learn from it i have learned from each and every situation that has happened in my life um i used to actually say that i just don't look bulky but i have a elephant's memory um and that is purely because i thought that it was very important for me to keep those learnings so that i don't repeat them again and then i can also use those learnings for a generation next to come um my secret sauce or theory to life would be obviously nothing comes easy uh but if you believe in god and if you pray harder and if you then say that okay this is the way i got to go um you are able to see much more clearly what will come in front of you you really don't know but you always you always get more energy to perform in your best possible manner tomorrow what's going to happen i have no idea but i just know one thing for a fact that uh cost going to support me to uh, to do what i have to do in my best possible way so i just go with that energy may may you have lots of it thank you so much thank for you. speaking to us ajay thank you